This is a reading from Akita, The Tears and Message of Mary. <clears throat> Chapter 12, The Virgin and St. Francis Xavier. On August 15th, 1549, Feast of the Assumption of the Virgin Mary, St. Francis Xavier, messenger of the good news of Jesus Christ, landed in Japan for the first time at the port of Kagoshima. It is a recorded historic fact. By an effect of divine providence, the Virgin wished that this precise day be the one for the people of Japan to first meet Christianity. And it goes without saying that this event led through the blessing and grace of God to an impressive number of vocations in our country. When he set foot on this corner of the Japanese archipelago, Francis Xavier certainly did not fail to show his love and devotion to the Virgin Mary, who had preserved him from dangers through a most perilous crossing. Beyond doubt, he consecrated Japan to her immaculate heart and prayed for her conversion on this solemnity when Mary is honored in her greatest glory. I remember having seen a film in my younger years on the discovery of America by Christopher Columbus. I vividly remember the moving scene in which the troop of navigators humbly kneels in prayer on the banks of the unknown country where their boat has landed. It is unthinkable that a saint like Francis Xavier, driven by an ardent missionary zeal, would not have made a fervent prayer of supplication to the Lord and asked Mary to intercede for the success of his mission on this blessed day, the Feast of Her Assumption. As a matter of fact, the prayer of the saint and the help of Mary from the very beginning had remarkable effects on the evangel evangelization of Japan. However, terrible persecutions followed shortly afterwards on the part of rulers, and there began a tragic period without precedent in the history of Japan, marked by executions and tortures without number. If the tears of Mary were not visible to the eyes of men at that time, is it not certain that they mix with the multitude of so many martyrs whose blood reddened the land of the rising sun? The Martyrs of Akita, recalling the words of the angel addressed to Sister Agnes, the Virgin has chosen this land of Akita to give her messages. I looked into a book relating the history of the Martyrs of Akita in the hope of finding some witness to the seeds of grace which could have been sown during those years of suffering. I will recite a brief passage from the remarkable study of Mr. Tetsujo Muto, entitled History of the Christians of Akita, Snow, Blood, and Holy Cross. The 3rd of June, in the first year of Kan Kaneera, 1624, marked the beginning of the sad history of the Christians of Akita. On this day took place the first executions in the fiefdom. The book goes on to quote from the journal of Masak Kaje, young brother of the judge of the castle who was a person feared by all the Christians as though the devil in person. In this journal, Masakaje records the three things he did on June the 3rd. One, I left the castle with my musket. Two, I had 32 Christians burned, 20 of them men and 12 women. Three, it was a nice day. The book continues. This is the only living chronicle which has come down to us concerning the genocide perpetrated against the Japanese Christians in this region at the beginning of the 17th century. One is profoundly shocked by the last words, it was a nice day, whose cruel echo comes down to us despite the separation of three centuries. At the same time, the reader sees, rolling on before his eyes, the sacrifice of some dozens of crucified, suffocating on the gibbet in the midst of the flames and fire which mount towards the heavens under, lead, under a leaden sky. Crasset recalls a scene in his work, History of Christianity in Japan. When the believers had been brought to the place of suffering, they were attached one by one to stakes, which had been set in the ground a little apart from each other. Kindling wood was placed around them and set afire. With a single heart and a single soul, they called upon the Lord the Savior while raising their eyes to heaven and accomplishing their martyrdom. The bodies were kept for three days by some men, and strange to say, certain guards began to say that the sky was illuminated during the night. One of them advised some believers, and all wished to see the mysterious phenomenon, going even to pass the night on the roofs, roofs of houses. The third evening, a large cloud covered the sky, and a heavy rain fell on more than 300 persons gathered at the places. These events brought great comfort to the Christians, and the pagans were amazed to see such prodigies take place before their eyes. When John Keeman was tied to the stake, a manuscript fell from his pocket, 
What was written upon it reveals to us the depth of his devotion towards the Virgin Mary. Holy Virgin, filled with divine grace, it is through your maternal tenderness that a being as unworthy as I has been able to believe in your son, Jesus Christ, and to render him homage. Deign to preserve my wife and my children from the sufferings of hell and preserve us in the faith until death. Holy Mother, in my so great weakness, how will I find the courage to bear my, by myself the great trial? Grant me, by the grace of your divine Son, the strength to overcome my fear. I do not beg help because of fear of falling into hell. My only desire is to offer myself in holocaust in the flames of the wood. Very good mother, do not disdain my prayers and deign to protect our wives, our children, and all our companions, that they may remain firm in the faith and in the holy doctrine until the hour of death. My soul experiences an ardent desire for the holy doctrine preached and cultivated without surcease by the priests of Japan. I am aware of the daring of such a request, but I know also that Jesus, from the height of the cross, gave us Mary for a mother. That is why, despite my fear, I come to implore your help. It is certainly not by chance that Mary chose this land of Akita, reddened by the blood of so many martyrs, to give her message and to manifest her tears. The angel continues with the assurance, Do not fear. The Blessed Virgin awaits you all, her hands extended to distribute graces. How can we fail to lend an attentive ear to such a warm invitation? The Second Evangelization of Japan. 280 years after this sad page in Christian history, Father Foucault of the Foreign Missions of Paris arrived in Japan and laid the foundations of a new evangelization. Landing at the port of Naha on May 1st, 1844, he celebrated Mass in the infirmary of a warship. After a prayer of thanksgiving, he consecrated Japan to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The text of that prayer of consecration is reported to us by Father Wasaburo Urakawa in the first volume of Resurrection of the Christians. O most holy heart of Mary, most beautiful, most pure, most honorable, stainless fountain of goodness, of sweetness, of compassion and of love, throne of all virtues, heart most tender and worthy of praises, and above all, accept the divine heart of Jesus. To you who have confided to me, despite my extreme weakness, the charge of spreading the gospel in these islands, I present and consecrate them, them in so far as it is possible, in order that you may take them under your special protection. When the work of evangelization will have begun in such a way that a solid base will have been made with a sufficient number of persons snatched from their vain idols and gained to the Christian faith and the chapel constructed, I promise at once to send a request to the Holy See in Rome in order that the entire country may be placed under your protection by public and official act. O most merciful heart of Mary, heart most powerful with the sacred heart of Jesus, so that it has never been heard or known that anyone who has sought your protection has been abandoned. Do not despise my humble prayers. Make my heart ever better. Dissipate the fog which holds it in darkness. Confronted by great difficulties and great dangers, I come to implore the grace of humility, prudence, intelligence, and courage. Since the all-powerful and very compassionate God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has chosen the miserable person I am according to what is written, what is despised by the world, God has chosen. That which is not to bring to nothing, that which is one, which is that which is. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 28. In order that he may deign to bring the light of the gospel and to eternal life, this people plunged for several centuries into darkness and death. Amen. It was only shortly afterwards that Japan put an end to its policy of closed borders, and at the same time the long persecutions of Christians came to an end. Nevertheless, Christianization did not progress. The faith spread but slowly, and the missions remained almost without effect. Then came the war in the Pacific, which was a catastrophe without precedent in the history of the Japanese people. It ended with the disaster of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the capitulation of August 15, 1945, Feast of the Assumption. For the some 90,000 Catholics of this country, it was a coincidence willed by divine providence, which would suggest once again the close link of their country with the Virgin Mary. With common accord, the assembly of Japanese bishops, following the example of Father Foucault, of whom we have spoken above, 
decided to consecrate the nation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and encourage this devotion among the Catholics. On the 4th of January, 1975, when the statue wept three times, the angel said to Sister Agnes, the Holy Virgin rejoices in the consecration of Japan to her Immaculate Heart because she loves Japan, but she is sad to see that this devotion is not taken seriously. Filial love towards Mary, Mother of God, and given to be Mother of all humanity, has always been considered as a devotion among the most orthodox throughout the ages, with a foundation in tradition as well as in scripture. Sustained by the love of Mary, the Christians of whom we have spoken resisted cruel persecutions and were able to consummate their martyrdom. Such has always been the love of the Virgin for Japan and her attachment to the Japanese people. But then, what is the meaning of those tears shed today? The prayer of consecration of, it, of Japan to the Immaculate Heart of Mary is found on page 241 of the collection of prayers used in all the Catholic churches of Japan. But if one could borrow the penetrating look of the angel to see into these same churches, would one find many Christians turning to that page? Or even if it is not said orally, in how many churches can one find a faithful devotion to Mary, animated by this intention? Translator's Note Readers of this book outside of Japan may easily apply almost every word above to themselves and to their own nation. Following the appeal of Our Lady of Fatima, most countries have been consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and the entire world has five times been consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary by the Holy Father, most recently on March 25th, 1984, in union with all the bishops of the world. And yet, indeed, how many even think of this consecration, let alone try to understand what it really means and how it applies to each one individually? This is critical in the message of Our Lady of Fatima and at Akita. As Pope John Paul II explains, the consecration means an entrustment of ourselves to Mary, even as our Lord entrusted us to her from the cross, and bringing the reality of this entrustment into our lives by such devotions as the scapular and the rosary. Also, these tears of Our Lady in Japan should have a special meaning for everyone in the United States, the nation which destroyed Nagasaki and Hiroshima with the atomic bomb, ending the Pacific War on the Feast of the Assumption in 1945. The economic ties today between the U.S. and Japan are such that despite the great distance between the two nations, there are cultural and economic ties all the more amazing because of the wounds of war which preceded them. We live in a time when it is not rare to see all prayers of petition through the intercession of Mary taken lightly. There are even persons who protest about superstition and even heresy, and before subjecting such cries to the proof of argument, one must say that such proposals are a flagrant rupture with the official position of the Church. Vatican Council II announced clearly regarding the Marian devotion, All Christians must pray to Mary, Mother of God and Mother of Men, in order that she may continue to intercede today with her Divine Son in the communion of all the saints, because Mary, by her fervent supplication, helped the Church from its beginning, and is elevated above all the angels and all the saints. Doesn't Our Lady weep because this text of the Council has been left almost in complete oblivion? The angel follows with these words of encouragement. The prayer that you are accustomed to say, grant to Japan the grace of conversion through the intercession of the, of the Virgin Mary is pleasing to the Lord. In the convent of the handmaids of the Eucharist, this prayer is recited every day before the rosary in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament exposed. This prayer, which we have the custom of saying each day in our community, which finds its origin in St. Francis Xavier, was repeated some time later by Father Foucault and reformulated in a recent time by the Assembly of Japanese Bishops. Full of filial tenderness and confidence, one does not fail to recite it with ever-renewed devotion. Translator's Note Bishop Ito asked for the translation of this book and its promulgation in the world because he was convinced that the message of Our Lady of Akita is not only for Japan, but for every nation. However, as Our Lady exhorts the people of Japan to recall their consecration to her Immaculate Heart as a nation, so each of us should pray for our own countries and weep and make reparation for our own national sins and our own lack of response to this critical message from heaven, recalling that the chastisement of which Our Lady speaks threatens every nation 
and that Our Lady has been appointed by God to save us and bring us peace. She said this explicitly in her message of Akita, as she has said it at Fatima, in the words of Jacinta, God has entrusted the peace of the world to her. In Our Lady's own words, if my requests are heard, an era of peace will be granted to mankind.